Well, hello, my bits, my little bits of sunshine, that is. My name is Veronica. Myself and my other half are with Chasing Sunshine. We come to you out of Northern California, close to the Oregon border. We are going to be showing you some DIY clay-based paint made from Miss Debbie Beard herself, as well as some Royce Cycled Papers. If you're interested in that type of content, stick around. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's do it. So when I first start a project, what I like to do is if I'm going to be using decoupage paper or um, transfers or any of that type of um, material, I want to first pick that and then pick the colors that will then match with that piece of product. So we're going to be using a Roy Cycle Paper. Is This is not the one actually. I stand corrected. I think I might use this one. Let's open this little girl up and see actually what we have. If you guys are interested in purchasing any of the painter product that we use, you can hop on over to our website, which is Chasing Sunshine uh, by V.com, or you can try and find a local retailer and go that route. And all you have to do is hop on over to the DIY.co page, enter your zip code, and your closest retailer will then pop up. Okay, so let's see. I definitely want to do something fun, but I'm almost feeling like this might be the better one because it's a bit smaller and it's a little more to scale of this little wooden board here. Okay. So we've made our decision. We're going to go ahead and use this Royce Cycle paper, and it is called the Dress Form Blocks. Um, it comes in a 20 by 30 sheet of 18 pound paper. Very good quality. If you've never used it, I highly recommend it. It goes very well with the DIY paint. Um, we've got lots of lovely colors to choose from that coordinate very well. So this is definitely wide enough, so you want to make sure that it's wide enough and long enough. So we're just going to cut off the bottom just a little itty bitty bit. Um, this actually is bigger. This is the full sheet, so you actually get two dress forms. Actually, this was a much bigger, this was a dress form block, so I've already used some of it. This is just part of it. And I think I'm going to use the lighter of the two. So with that said, I almost feel like I want to use a darker color on this so that it makes the decoupage paper pop. And so with that said, I'm going to get into my handy down little box. We have some old school on hand. We also have some prairie gray on hand. Um, this old school is about empty, but I do have a, that, that bigger one there. Okay, and there are some creams and browns and such within that too. So let's just continue on. Let's see what we got going on here. We got some boho blue. Got some skeleton key, which this is already a a light gray color and we have some layered chocolate i'm almost feeling like i'm going to go with layered chocolate and old school and see what we come up with here let's do it okay i kind of want to do a little mixology so with that said this old school like i said there's not a lot in there there's probably about this much um this much in the jar here of old school left i'm going to pour some layered chocolate in there so um, i'm going to do about half and half and i'm definitely just going to estimate that so we've got half old school and half layered chocolate and then we're just going to mix it together mix it all up and see what we come up with there's been a lot of mixology going on on the DIY paint page, and um, I want to give it a whirl as well. So that is one thing with these paints. They're very versatile. They mix well together. You could create your own custom colors, which then makes your project like stand out, you know, from others that maybe use just a standard flat color, which that's okay too. If you've never used this paint, it's highly, highly pigmented, guys, and it is a clay-based paint. It does also have a chalk component. This is kind of making it a real, like, rich, 
charcoal brown color. Basically is what we got. So that's what we're gonna use today. Get myself a little napkin right over here. And we're gonna get to work. I personally am a fan of the clean on brushes. I am a fan. So with that said, we're gonna use the Klingon S30. I always like to spray my um, bristles with the Klingons. It's recommended. And I don't want to waste any paint, so I'm going to go ahead and get all of the paint off my stir stick here. And we're just going to go straight in with painting this. This is something that we picked up at a yard sale this last weekend. And I'm super stoked because my other half, Mr. Jeremy Rose, actually found this. Um, and he <laughs> went up to the gal. It had, there was a sister to this. It's a slightly bigger one. And there was, it was eight bucks for the two, um, which is kind of high, you know, for a yard sale and for this item. And so Jeremy went up to the gal and said, would you take five for the two? <laughs> she did. So he was really super proud of himself and he, he knew I would, would like this. And so he got it straight away, which I thought was absolutely adorable. So when you decoupage, you typically want to decoupage on a lighter surface, guys. Um, but I am going to see what the effect is on a darker surface with this specific piece of decoupage paper. Uh, the DIY clay paint, guys, it smells very earthy. There's no odors other than that as far as like there's no chemical smells because there are no chemicals. Um, if you've never used this paint, um, you wouldn't know, but now you will, that it's made with only nine simple ingredients um, and they're all natural. So that's super fun. And I'm really excited to be a retailer for them. Very fortunate. It's not easy because they, um, Miss Debbie is very, very um, much supports her retailers and she wants us to all have an equal playing field and so because of that you can only sell re retail sell the paint if you do not have any other retailers within a certain mileage which is kind of cool just because that's miss debbie taking care of us and so with that said you definitely want to support your local re local retailers um and that handy dandy the tool on her site will be able to identify the closest retailer to you you will also get the product faster if it's closer to you you know in most cases and so for all those reasons definitely support your closest retailer um but you also could go ahead and support us too if you like so i'm really excited about this this project because um if you've never seen folks um do the decoupage on planks like this it actually ends up looking super sweet like i really really like the look the overall look so i'm gonna go ahead and put you over there we're just gonna go ahead and finish all four sides of this and get this project done so i am planning on making this a wall hanging um and kind of like a little shelf situation i'm coming to you guys on a pre-recorded video because our home internet is so poor that i really do not like putting you guys through the lag waiting and waiting and waiting for the program to come back on so for that reason i decided to go ahead and give this a try to see how you folks enjoy it as well as how it works um, if i'm able to upload this video which i hope to so this is a really beautiful color that we created with the layered chocolate and old school. There are a little bit of chunks in here because I was at the bitter end of that old school. Um, chunks are good because you can break them down if, since it is a clay-based paint and you could reconstitute them into a liquid form just by adding a little bit of water. Um, and so that's a super cool little of this paint because typically if you've ever used latex paint you know you get that those like sticky filmy kind of like globs and there's no reconstituting it with water and so that's one of the advantages we have with this clay component in the DIY paint 
If you like what you see, don't forget to hop on over to our personal page, which is Chasing Sunshine on every single platform. So I'm gonna put some heat to this. Patina, which is the secret sauce that it's basically a top coat, but it's also used as a transfer medium, a decoupage medium, and so it is all around a great little tool to have in your toolbox. Um, if you um, can order anything, I highly recommend the DIY liquid patina. I always like to use a chip brush when I do use a, a patina of any sort just because Oops, I left that in the water overnight. Just because I like to use a patina, guys. Um, I mean, I like to use a chip brush because it, any sort of top coat is definitely harder on your brush than not. Um, to get my edges just so, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this. I am gonna use scissors. Typically, I like to use the wet method where I just take a like a wet paintbrush and I go along the um, image wherever I want it to then be cut so that we have more of an organic edge and not a straight edge because anytime you have a straight edge and you're trying to then blend it into your project it definitely is that much harder to make it look like authentically organic um, but for this specific reason I am going our specific project I'm going to go ahead and cut a straight edge because we have straight edges here to um, decoupage up to, if that makes any sense. And so it's, it is hard to even get a, a straight cut for me sometimes. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm basically trying to trim this up so that it's more of a straight edge. You know what I just thought of actually. Since this is a definite straight edge, we're going to utilize that for my first straight edge. And then we're simply going to lay the um, piece of paper inside of my area here. I want to get all this topography and word um, like advertising into this um, more so than the form, the dress form. And so I'm just going to kind of scoot it up as close to that edge as I possibly can. Okay, there we go. I like that. I like that. And then I'm just going to work, easily work its way in, and then I'm just going to use my fingernails to then identify the, the this straight edge that I need to cut it to. And I'll work very hard to try and get my scissors to then cut that. So I'm having a hard time right here because it's not wanting to bend in. So I'm just going to get a little snip just so that I can mani manipulate that paper a little bit more. And I'm going to identify the corner with that scissors and then I'm going to again come through make sure that the top is aligned where you want it and then just use your fingernail and then just make that mark basically is what you're going to do so then you take this out you use your scissors again I'm using a straight edge but you can definitely use um, the wet method or however you want to cut it then I'm using scissors this time, and I'm going to work my hardest to go right along that edge. You typically want to cut a little more than not to give yourself a little wiggle room, but in this instance, since it's going down into this, I want to get it as straight and precise as possible. Now there are several ways to do this. If you guys have any pointers and um, have any suggestions or ideas on how you like to insert your decoupage paper into an inset area like that, please let us know and let's share all of our ideas. Um, that's what this community is for, so that we can just share our ideas and work together. And so I'm happy with that. I'm happy, very happy with that. Always save your little scraps, guys, because you can use that on other projects. Okay, so now that we have this, 
identified as our set in area. Then we went, then take it out and then start laying our decoupage medium. Okay, I'm using this little tool here, which is just a little squeegee of sorts. I got it on Amazon for a few bucks, literally. It was like $11 and I got two of them plus a cutting tool. So you always wanna also put your paintbrush into some water so that you're not, you know, so that you can extend the lifetime of your <laughs> paintbrush. Okay, so then you just get some decoupage medium on here, guys and you start lining it in. You don't want it super, super thick. You don't want it super, super thin. You kind of want to be just right, kind of like that there, just in the meeting, in the middle there. Um, I am going to then come back and cut where these planks are so that the decoupage paper, so that um, the paper sits within the planks and it's not like covering the entire surface. You guys will see in just a minute here once I get this on. I'm also trying to pay attention to like not slop it up on the sides too much because wherever this decoupage medium hits, it's gonna turn this, this when it dries a little different because it is a little shiny when it dries, this um, look of patina. It's um, not 100% matte, it's, it's not super shiny, but it definitely turns the, um, the paint surface different, a little different color. And I'm, I usually wax. Um, I like to wax my projects versus top coat them. Mostly, obviously it depends on the project and that's why Miss Debbie has so many different mediums out there. Um, she thought of everything. So now I'm gonna get started with line this in here. I'm gonna start at the tippy top, gonna line it up. Get my finger wet just a little bit so that I can move it up just a half a hair. And then now that it's set where I want it, guys, I'm gonna use my squeegee tool and I'm just gonna work my way down. I try really hard to not get any uh, medium on the squeegee as well. So when I get closer to the edges, I, I you know, don't go all the way to the edges until like the very end so that I'm not dragging the medium on the top parts of this paper as I apply it. Because at this point, I'm just trying to work out as many of the wrinkles as I can. Um, and now I also do like the look of, of wrinkles, but I also try to, you know, not have a, a alarmingly a lot. <laughs> not trying to have a lot of wrinkles, but distressed age look is. Oops, I did not mean to do that. So in that case, what I'm going to do is just get this scissors. Okay, perfect. Yeah, just go slow and focus when you're working with paper. You don't want to pull on it too much um, because it is a tissue paper, y'all. Keep that in mind as far as like ripping it and such. Okay, we're almost down to the bitter end here. And you could see because I had painted it a darker color instead of a lighter color, because we recommend uh, painting lighter colors as the under color so that it then makes the decoupage paper pop. However, for this project, I wanted it to be more moody than not. And so that's why I chose to go with the darker color. And you can just, now I'm kind of, you know, being a little more loose with if I get a little bit of that medium on this it's going to be a okay and it's definitely going to squirt out just a little bit and I'm working my way side to side versus up and down mostly to get the wrinkles out and that's just because we have the planks in here and so um, I have less room to push the paper just to that nearest plank there and um, to get some of these wrinkles and such out I'm making it sure that all edges are definitely adhered and paying close attention to the outside corners. I definitely want to make sure that we've got enough of that liquid patina so that um, the image doesn't then flip up at a later date when it's dried and such. Okay guys, this is looking great so far. I love the moodiness of it. I love this layered chocolate and old school mixture. Okay, come back this way. There we go. I'm going to take my fingers 
Actually, I'm going to take this brush. It's kind of got a nice round tip to it and just push push all the corners down and make sure that they're all adhered because I didn't want to get any of that medium onto that squeegee. Okay, and this is where we're going to take, um, I do believe I have a knife. Did I bring a knife? I thought I brought a knife. If I didn't bring a knife, we're going to use water. So now we're just going to use water. I'm going to go ahead and um, get this wet. And then I'm going to come along these edges here. You can see where the planks are. And I'm basically going to um, wet them just a little bit more. So then we can push it through. I'm going to do that on all three areas here. I'll let it sit for just a second there. And this has given me an opportunity to show you all the wet method. And then it's as easy as just pushing it through. So for that purpose, I'm just going to use my nail. And because you do want to be very careful at this point not to um, distort the image that's on the flat planks. Um, but as it goes in between, it's okay if it's more tattered and ripped like that. And that's why instead of just like going like that and risking ripping it, pulling it down from there, I'm just kind of pushing it through up and down. Okay. Take your time, we're in no rush here, guys. We are on our lunch break. And this one's just a little thinner of a space. So I'm really taking my time because I don't want to pull it off that plank at all. Again, if you guys wouldn't mind hopping on over to all of our social media platforms, that's Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, at Chasing Sunshine by Veronica. That would be super cool. We really appreciate it, guys. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to come in with um, our top coat of the liquid patina. And you guys seen how much I started with. There was literally not much at all. And it just goes to show you that it doesn't take all that much to do a project. So if you invest in this high quality liquid patina, you know, it is a little more to invest in, in the uh, upfront, but it is so worth it. You guys will not be sad. It will not make you sad. Okay. And then I'm just going to Make sure to get down in the edges because I want them to definitely stick. Mm -hmm. And you can thin this out slightly too. If your paintbrush starts dragging it off, just give it a little spritz of water because it's all water-based products. Therefore, water works well with it. You definitely want to make sure that you get all those itty bitty edges pushed down though. Um, and I feel like, I feel like I need just a tad bit more. And so I have a tad bit more right here. Definitely don't skimp on your products, you guys. Use what you need. I just try to, you know, not waste my product. It's like gold, as I like to say, and I am getting a little bit up here. It will dry, um, and it will be just fine. But what I've learned when I've decoupaged with liquid patina, and I only like hydrated the areas that the images and not the rest of it, like I didn't do the rest of the suitcase when I was working on it, it definitely looked funny because I didn't come back in with a top coat of the liquid patina on the whole surface area. I used wax and it was slightly different color as far as being not matte. Like when you use a wax as a top coat on your projects, guys, it's more of a sheen. Um, and then the liquid patina is more of a, a matte sheen. It's not like super shiny. 
and the top coat, um, big top from the DIY paint line is a little more shiny than not. So if you like that shiny look, that's, that's the one you would like. Definitely. They're all great and they all have a purpose. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting that worked down in there. Okay, feeling good about that. Feeling really good about that. Trying to take a little bit of the overage off. And then when you get you know it all down in place like you want, then you come back with one final swoop in the same direction so that there's no sort of um, variation with the direction that you go. It's kind of like working with the green, essentially. Okay, I'm feeling really super good about that. And so that's where we are with this. And then let's put some heat on it. I typically don't like to put heat on the decoupage paper like that, but we're gonna. In this specific situation, we're going to. After, of course, we button up our product. So what I do is I put my liquid patina in um, a FIFO bottle, and then I always have a little extra in the, these containers, so that's why I just have random jugs of it. And then I definitely want to stick this into some water here. So the way it's going to be is it's going to be up like this, and I was thinking of like having maybe a hook come out of there, uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. Let's see here. Hmm. I'm really liking this. It might even be good like as a jewelry display if I put some sort of like little catch-alls there. Um, yeah, the sky's the limit. I don't have a lot of widget bin on hand, so let's see what we got and what we could pro possibly do. I at least could do like one cute little situation. The cool thing about the widget bin, guys, is that it bends. You heat it up and it bends, which is sweet. I think I like it. It's super sweet. However, I'm not really seeing how we can incorporate any of these, honestly. Okay, that's not going to work. Typically, that's all there is to it, you guys. You just distress it, wax it, seal it, whatever you want to do, and, and that's it. So that's basically the pro so that's the project we have today. To recap, we use DIY old school mixed with equal parts of DIY layered chocolate <laughs> so that's it guys that's gonna complete our project for the day so that's it y'all so that is our project for the day guys to recap we use diy layered chocolate mixed with equal parts of diy old school and applied it down to this tray here. Came in with some liquid patina and recycled paper. Came over the top with some more liquid patina and then we're going to distress it up, seal it with some clear wax, put a couple hooks on it and it's gonna be good to go. If you like this project today, don't forget to share it out with your friends and family and hop on over to Chasing Sunshine by Veronica on all platforms. We really appreciate your time. And as always, you guys chase that sunshine and have a wonderful darn day. Bye.